<laughs> yes, I have. Um, I, um, it's about 10 months to 12 months later. I can't remember. I think it's, it might be a year later. I think it's a year. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I'm alive, and I um, had a lot of weird shit I had to do after being stabbed in the gut three times. It, there's a lot of weird stuff around it. Like you, do. you don't see that in the series. I'm just giving you backstory. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened in the last 10 months before the series starts. Um, Insight. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to catch you guys. The series starts season one, <laughs> season two, but I'm going to tell you what happened in the meantime. But um, yeah, there's recovery. I'm, uh, there's a lot about my internal issues and suffering with uh, being a victim of uh, a friend. And a colleague and a person who could, you know, got me and I got him and a lot of other people didn't get us. And that person stabbed me. So the betrayal is tremendous. And, um, I don't know. Like, I think, it, I think the most, the biggest thing for me this season was that I knew, a, I know a lot of people and I, you know, I've experienced my own little PTSD. I love how I just made that sound a little. You know, a little PTSD. <laughs> you know, that little thing where you wake up in hot sweats. Um, so I, that's, I explore that a lot in season, in season two. Um, and then that ties in with everybody else. And <laughs> Can't give too much away, right? <laughs> Can you give us insight into your own research into PTSD and, and uh, victims and survival? Um, yeah. I, um, it's interesting because when you have, when you're given a story, when I'm given a story, I, it's sort of like the, the story starts highlighting all of the things that I've already learned. So, um, I was reading at the time before I started uh, Victor Frankl's Man's yeah. Search for Meaning, which is the portrait of Victor Frankl who lived through Auschwitz when I think 20% of the people survived. So most people didn't. And the systemic and systematic um, removal of personhood there was um, really interesting. Uh, to read about, and, and, and his particular thing is about in, in like, finding meaning, in life, even inside, in meaning, uh, even life has no meaning any longer, and, and the survival is like, uh, like finding power and strength in you when you've been assured that you have that over and over again. And so we learn more about me in the story of my past, and. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's getting rowdy. Yeah. It's getting rowdy. It's getting late in the day. I know. I know this beer is kicking in. <laughs> just kidding. Not drink. Um, just coffee. But, um, yeah, I mean, also the, um, there's Brady Hartsfield is representative of a person who hasn't been seen, hasn't been heard, feels like they're disenfranchised from the world, and then acts out super violently. So he can be seen and heard. And when he's not, he takes measures to be seen. Right? I mean, you could say that he wanted to be caught. Um, these kids that are shooting up high schools most certainly want to be caught. And they're after celebrity, or after people noticing them. And, um, and, I, and that's happening a lot in Brady Hartsfield, I think, is like a portrait of that person. You know, this uh, white, heterosexual, maybe male, um, who wants to be seen and takes extreme measures with disregard to people's lives in order to get that for himself, right? 
<laughs> and I come from the same background that he does in this story, and I didn't do that. And so not everybody does that. And so what is it that differentiates Brady from me? And this season, it's like, well, what does differentiate? Just like, what, my will? I think it's because I'm a lady. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think there's like a then the feminist. Like, only women around the world, right? I'm like, everything that I'm saying is going to be like either proven or disproven by the series. Like, some of the shit I'm saying is red herring, but that's it. Um, but, I mean, I've also known lots of people who've been, you know, um, it's interesting because it felt like a domestic violence issue with Brady and and it felt like a hand-me-down from his mom. So, but he doesn't kill me, right? He just holds that knife up there and then doesn't kill me. Which, I, which is a sign that I don't know. Like his own version of love, or at least his own version of love. Yeah. Uh, I, I was very Harry, Harry and I always had through that whole season one I was like you are so in love with me <laughs> and he'd be like I am not in love with you at all I'm a sociopath <laughs> you just love me you love me does he love me <laughs> your character went through I'd say you didn't in my opinion I love your character but you didn't have a lot of screen time oh, I just felt that came in through the scenes and then basically just left such an impression we wanted to know more and then now for season two hopefully we get a little bit more screen time with you uh, I don't know I haven't seen any of the edits <laughs> I'm just like edited out of the show <laughs> but, you know, I mean yeah, shit yeah, I'll, I'll be raging I'll be raging on Twitter like, yeah. like, I'll be like what was that that was it but, um, yeah, but, you learn a lot more about me. I don't know in terms of like time on screen that will amount to, but um, sometimes time is like, if you learn a lot about me, um, like maybe it's a small amount of, I don't know how long, like maybe it's a small amount of time, but it's a lot. Like in the other time you didn't learn this much about it, but you learn a lot about Brady and I was, you know, I sort of use Brady as my reflector for me in season yeah. one. This yeah. season I learned a lot about where I came from. And does your character, do you think after the portrayal of Brady's portrayal, and how you pretty much, he was literally right next to you, your best pal, this monster, do you find that your character would be not as trusting? I mean, the biggest thing is that I can't trust myself. So every survival technique that I have had in my life is wrong. Every uh, friend I've ever had is fake. Every uh, interaction with people is I can't trust. So how the hell would I be able to trust? Like, I've been already proven through data that I am wrong. My instincts are all wrong. So how does... I mean, that is the biggest fallout from violence and betrayal. <laughs> betrayal is uh, I don't have any beak. I don't have any radar. My radar has been extinguished, and so if I don't have a radar, I don't have a survival technique. So how do I even walk out of my door? You know, which I think is like literally like how do you have a <laughs> how do you have a list of data? Saying you're this, you're this, you're this, you're this, you're this, and then go. Actually, I'm whoever I say. That's super hard. That is like maybe one of the hardest things anybody can do. And so, man, I don't even know. That's. I'm just kind of talking about the things I was thinking about while I was making this. I'm not even telling you about the story. Or plot. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like the. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's like, I've been told that if I trust somebody, they will betray me. And then there's other things. You learn about other things that also support that story. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. That's a great way to end it. Okay. It's the periodic table. Yeah, my best.
best friend, my two best friends are chemists. So I bought this for Thank her and then so didn't give it to her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to keep it. Yeah. Yes. We got to get to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we are like, I have lost control. It's like he's in here. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Don't let him inside. Am I in your dream?